be back, everyone, and here is the news for today's episode. Joko Widodo says Indonesia will gradually reopen parts of the country. Indonesia will gradually reopen parts of the country where COVID-19 vaccination rates are above 70 percent, President Joko Widodo told a Southeast Asian Business Forum. Jika semua negara ASEAN segera memfasilitasi mobilitas masyarakat dengan aman, If all ASEAN countries immediately facilitate the safe mobility of people, then the wheels of economy shall soon run again. Indonesia has gradually reopened Bali for safe tourism with strict health protocols. Indonesia reopened Bali after the full vaccination rate reached 84.8 percent. Indonesia will gradually open other areas once the fully vaccination rates exceeds 70 percent. Buka secara bertahap wilayah yang lain yang tingkat vaksinasi penuhnya melebihi 70 persen. The Indonesian President Jokowi also said Southeast Asia should start loosening travel restrictions, including vaccinated lanes for inoculated arrivals with negative COVID-19 tests. He said it was important the region reforms to prepare for future health crisis. The regional of the 10-member bloc will meet virtually in a regional summit on October 26 to 28. It is not clear if anybody will now represent Myanmar at the meeting after ASEAN foreign ministers last week decided to sideline leader of junta government Ming Oh Leng for his failure to implement a peace plan which included ending hostilities, initiating dialogue, allowing humanitarian support and granting a special envoy full access in the country. Philippine recyclers turn plastic waste into the building planks. A group of recyclers in the Philippines are trying to tackle the country's soaring plastic waste crisis by turning bottles, single-use sachets, and snack food wrappers that clog rivers and spoil beaches into building materials. And our core mission is to tackle marine plastic pollution by collecting and recycling plastic waste into recyclable products. The plastic flamingo, or the PLAV, as they are commonly known, collect the waste, shred it and mold it into posts and planks, called ecolumber that can be used for fencing, decking, or even to make disaster relief shelters. Ecolumber is 100% uh, upcycled materials, so 100% made out of uh, plastic waste materials, and we also include some additives and colorants, and this is a rat-free, maintenance-free, uh, splinter-free, Having collected over 100 tons of plastic waste since it started in 2019, the company is doing its bit to try and tackle a local problem that has global ramifications. Because of the plastic problem we're currently facing, the pandemic, the huge accumulation of plastic use, there's also improper disposal. People are unaware on you know, how do I dispose these plastics, where do I dispose of them. So at the same time, we give that avenue also that instead of putting it in landfills or oceans in general, you know, you give it to the PLAF, you give it to recycling centers like us, and we would recycle these, upcycle them into better products. Approximately 80% of global ocean plastic comes from Asian River, and the Philippines alone contributes a third of that total, according to the 2021 report by Oxford University's Our World in Data, but they face an uphill battle. Some 300 million tons of plastic waste are produced annually, according to the United Nations Environment Program, a problem that has been exacerbated by the pandemic which sparked a rush for plastic face shields, gloves, takeaway food containers, and bubble wrap as online shopping surged. As well as tackling waste problems, the group say they are in talks with other non-government organizations to help rebuild houses destroyed by typhoons using their sustainable building materials. Heavy rains trigger widespread flooding in several parts of central Vietnam. Prolonged heavy rains trigger widespread flooding in several parts of central Vietnam, killing at least one person and leaving three others missing. Footage from the state broadcaster showed people moving belongings and furniture out of their flooded homes in Quang Nam province, with flood water seen gushing out of the damaged wall in one residence. Children sat on a makeshift raft to move down a street as others waded through knee deep flood water in Quang Ngai province. Authorities evacuated at least 4,500 people in Quang Ngai province from flood prone areas over the weekend, state media reported. Rainfall over the past three days averaged 200 to 500 millimeters in the central coastal area stretching from Tuan Tian Hue and Bihin Din province. The government's weather forecast agency said a tropical low pressure system in the South China Sea is forecast to dump more rain in the southern central coastal area stretching from Quantri to Kanhua province over the next days. Former Chinese ambassador made statement in response to U.S. United States' intention to manipulate the Taiwan issue is doomed to fail.
said Chu Tiankai, former Chinese ambassador to the United States. Chu made the statement in response to the United States' recent move to challenge the One China principle, as several politicians in Washington recently have been feverishly challenging Beijing's red line on Taiwan by hyping up a preposterous claim that Taiwan is a sovereign self-governing country and calling for the Chinese island's involvement at the United Nations. First, United States intention goes against the tide of history. Second, it completely ignores what Resolution 2758 actually says. Resolution 2758, adopted 50 years ago, made it clear that there is only one China in the world. In fact, the United States recognized it at that time. Why does it attempt to reverse the resolution now? It actually has an axe to grind, but its intention is doomed to fail, and China will never allow it to succeed. Chu Tiankai said, when attended the 50th anniversary of the restoration of People's Republic of China lawful seat in the UN. Chu stressed that the UN today is not what it was 50 years ago. It is no longer the case of that few major powers have the final say. After 70 years and more, the United Nations should make a new start and the world order should move towards an increasingly fair and more reasonable direction. On October 25, 1971, the UN General Assembly adopted Resolution 2758 with an overwhelming majority in its 26th session, which decided to restore all lawful rights of the People's Republic of China in the UN and recognize the representatives of its government as the only legitimate UN representatives of China. Chinese President stresses efforts to uphold UN's authority practice through multilateralism. Chinese President Xi Jinping called for efforts to resolutely uphold the authority and standing of the United Nations and work together to practice true multilateralism. Xi made the call in Beijing at the conference marking the 50th anniversary of the restoration of the People's Republic of China's lawful seat in the UN. International rules can only be made by the 193 UN member states together and not decided by individual countries or blocks of countries. International rules should be observed by the 193 UN member states, and there is no and should be no exception. He noted building a community with a shared future for mankind requires a strong UN and to reform and development of the global governance system. Countries should uphold the international system with the UN at its core, the international order underpinned by international law and basic norms of international relations based on the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. She said international rules can only be made by the 193 UN member states together and not decided by individual countries or blocks of countries. She calls on countries around the world to respect the United Nations, take care of the UN family refrain from exploiting the organization, still less abandoning it at one's will, and make sure the United Nations plays an even greater positive role in advancing humanity's noble cause of peace and development. Network outage across South Korea South Korean telecom service provider KT Corp said a widespread outage, a routing error, and a cyber attack is initially suspected. KT earlier said it suspected a distributed denial of services, DDoS, attack, brought down the network and the police said they were investigating. KT users, including restaurant owners, expressed their anxiety and anger over the inconvenience. Around 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., it was peak hours, but customers left without paying because our car machine didn't work after it lost internet connection and other people kept coming in. I cannot even say how angry I am. I really do not have a word to say. Services were restored more than an hour after the outage began, the Minister of Science and ICT said in a statement. I had a problem with using the internet and messengers because of the KT issue. Some people around me had issues with trading stock, so I was very disappointed about the security weakness, and I'm thinking of moving to another company from KT. Isn't there supposed to be a preventative measure? I think they did not prepare or have solution for the problem. This shall not happen in an emergency. But if there is be a war or something like this later, I will be stuck in fear because I cannot do anything. I do not have any idea to handle this. China has maintained the world's biggest winter sports in Beijing 2022. 
The final stages of preparations were underway for the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics, with 100 days to go until the Games begin. Despite concerns about the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, China has maintained that the world's biggest winter sports event will take place on schedule from February 4 to February 20 next year. Beijing will also become the first city to host both the Summer and the Winter Games. Tickets for the Games will be sold to spectators from mainland China only, while unvaccinated athletes must spend 21 days in quarantine ahead of the Games, the International Olympic Committee said in September. This was after the Tokyo Games in July were held in empty stadiums due to the COVID-19 precautions. The International Olympic Committee also said among the Beijing safety principles were that all fully vaccinated participants would enter what it called a closed-loop management system immediately upon their arrival, within which they will move freely. This will cover all games-related areas and stadiums, as well as accommodation, catering, and the opening and closing ceremonies, served by a dedicated transport system. All domestic and international participants, as well as the workforce in the system, will be tested daily, the International Olympic Committee said. The Games will last 16 days in total. Right groups and US lawmakers have called on the IOC to postpone the Games and relocate the event unless China ends what the United States deem ongoing genocide against Uyghurs and other Muslim minority groups. In Seoul, protesters dress up in Squid Game costumes, protesting for more jobs and better work conditions. Protesters in Seoul took to the streets, decked out in outfits from the Netflix mega-hits Squid Game, protesting for more jobs and better work conditions during a demonstration by South Korea's main labor group. Thousands of members of the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions took part in nationwide demonstrations, according to the group. Unionists dressed up in pink jumpsuits and masks with white circle square or triangle symbols worn by guards in Squid Game were seen beating drums to loud music and dancing. The Seoul city government said it had filed a police complaint against the group for defying COVID-19 curbs by staging illegal protests, violating the infectious disease prevention law. Only one person protests are allowed in the capital and surrounding areas are under current social distancing rules. The restrictions violate the basic rights granted by the constitution and it is unfair that outdoor rallies are seen as more as dangerous than sporting events where more spectators are allowed. The Korean Confederation of Trade Unions spokesman Han Sanji told Reuters when asked about the police complaint. Well, thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you again. Have a nice weekend.